Think you're an ace when it comes to sports trivia? Okay then, let's see if you know the answer to this question. Who is the only special teams player ever to be named MVP of the National Football League? Those of you born in the last quarter century probably think I'm joking, but I'm not. There really was a special teams player who won the NFL MVP award. I'll give you a couple clues. He's a kicker, played for Washington, 1980s. Name rhymes with Bark Bosley. Give up? The answer, as your dear old grandpappy will probably tell you, is Mark Mosley. In 1982, Mark Mosley, place kicker for the Washington Redskins, became the first and only special teams player in NFL history to be named the most valuable player. And the crazy thing about Mark Mosley is that until 1982, the dude wasn't even considered one of the NFL's best kickers. He was just okay, but he led the league in field goals made a couple of times. The Redskins liked him, but in his 10 NFL seasons prior to winning MVP, Mosley had been selected for the Pro Bowl just once. And by 1982, he was more famous for being the only guy in the league who still used the old fashioned straight on toe kicking style, which is the place kicking equivalent of shooting granny style free throws in basketball. And everybody else in the NFL had adopted soccer style kicking by that point. But in 1982, Mark Mosley came out of nowhere, had this incredible record breaking season and made history by winning the MVP award. Obviously, it would be virtually impossible for a kicker to win the MVP in today's NFL. A guy would have to make, I don't know, 50 field goals from beyond 50 yards to even make a name for himself, let alone garner MVP consideration. But it's not like it was normal for a kicker to win the MVP award in 1982. It was weird then too. And it took a number of unique circumstances beyond the fact that Mosley had one awesome season. After his MVP season, Mosley went back to being just a regular old pretty good kicker. And a few years after that, he was gone, retired, practically forgotten about. So whatever happened to Mark Mosley? Where is he today? The answer to that question is almost as crazy as a kicker being named NFL MVP. Mosley may not be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, but his post-football career has been unbelievably successful. So let's start with Mosley's incredible, unlikely football career. Today, NFL place kickers are almost completely taken for granted because of how consistent they are. In 2017, kickers converted 866 of 1,027 field goal attempts for an astounding 84.3% success rate. They were 79% from 40 to 49 yards, and they were 69% from 50 to 59 yards. Nice. Now let's compare that to 1982. In 1982, Kickers converted 68% of their attempts, and they were 62% from 40 to 49 yards, and 25% from 50 to 59 yards. So in 2017, kickers made twice as many field goals as they even attempted in 1982. And they made 10 times more field goals from 50 plus yards. But not Mark Mosley. In 1982, Mark Mosley put up some 2017 numbers. So before we get to his numbers, let's pause for a moment and talk about how he kicked. For me, I like the ball almost straight up and down because that's where I hit the sweet spot every time. And back when football players wore those goofy leather helmets that looked like water polo caps, NFL place kickers used what was called the straight on or toe kicking style. They would line up directly behind the ball and with their ankle lock, they'd strike the ball with the tip of their toe. And this method required a special shoe with an extremely rigid toe. Most guys would also tape up their ankles, locking them into an L shape. But in the 50s and 60s, things started to change. Soccer-loving Europeans started immigrating to the United States from places like Poland and Hungary. And when they started playing American football, they were like, yo, the way you guys kick the ball is whack. Oh, that is whack. In 1957, a guy named Fred Bednarski, who played for the Texas Longhorns, kicked the first ever soccer-style field goal in the history of American football. In soccer-style kicking, the kicker approaches the ball from the side rather than from behind, rotating his hips and swinging his leg toward the ball. You know, the way you swing a golf club or a hammer. This type of motion generates what's called angular momentum, where rotation allows the foot to hit the ball with greater speed. And because the kicker strikes the ball with his instep, not his toe, there's a higher likelihood he'll hit the sweet spot on the ball. While Bednarski was the first to kick a soccer style field goal, it was a pair of Hungarians, brother Peter and Charlie Gogolat, who are credited with popularizing soccer style kicking in the NFL in the 60s. And after them, soccer style kicking continued to gain in popularity throughout the 1970s. And by 1982, there were only two old fashioned straight on toe kickers left. One was the Minnesota Vikings, Rick Dan Meyer, and the other was Mark Mosley. So now let's talk about Mosley's incredible, unlikely 1982 season. In 146 NFL games from 1970 to 1981, Mark Mosley converted 62% of his attempts 
at a career rate just slightly below the 1982 league average. In 1979, when Mosley made his first Pro Bowl appearance, he was 25 for 33. But in 1982? In 1982, Mark Mosley went 20 for 21, and those 20 field goals were tops in the NFL. And his 95.2% was the highest in NFL history at the time. In fact, Mosley's 95.2% is still the 18th best single season field goal percentage of all time. His record stood for eight years until Tony Zendahas went 31 for 31 in 1991. In short, Mosley was insanely good in 1982, and his field goal percentage was 27 points higher than the league average. His teammates started calling him Mr. Automatic. However, as good as Mosley was in 1982, he probably still wouldn't have won the MVP award if not for the fact that the regular season was shortened to just nine games due to a 57 day long player strike. And because of that, star players weren't able to reach the counting stat benchmarks that helped people assess how good they were. There were no quarterbacks with 20 touchdowns or 3,000 passing yards. There were no running backs with 1,000 rushing yards. And there were no defensive ends with 15 sacks. In the absence of those achievements, Mosley's field goal percentage practically leapt off the page. He'd had one of the greatest kicking seasons ever, if not the greatest. And to top it all off, he did it using an old-fashioned, inefficient kicking style. Given all that, the Associated Press panel of writers was like, yeah, sure, what the hell? Let's make the kicker the MVP. It's a weird year, why not? Let's get weird! Let's get weird! Let's get weird! Let's get weird! After being named MVP, Mosley and the Washington Redskins would go on to win the Super Bowl. Because of the strike that year, eight teams made the playoffs in each conference, and nobody got a first round bye. Mosley converted just two of six field goal attempts in his first three playoff games. However, against the Dolphins in Super Bowl 17, he went two for two, putting an exclamation point on his fairy tale season. After toe kicking his way into history in 1982, Mark Mosley came back down to earth in 1983. And while he did lead the NFL with 161 points, a mark that still stands as the eighth best of all time, that had more to do with the fact that the Washington Redskins were really good and scored a ton of touchdowns. Because the rest of his team was so good, Mosley got to attempt a league high 63 extra points in 1983 converting a league-high 62 of them. Only 99 of his 161 points came on field goals. Mosley attempted a league-high 47 of those, but converted 70%, a pretty huge drop-off from his record-setting 95% the year before. Three years later, in 1986, Mark Mosley, the NFL's last straight-on kicker, kicked his last field goal at the age of 38. But it wasn't with the Washington Redskins. They'd release him in the middle of the season. Mosley's last field goal came with the Cleveland Browns, it was a 24-yarder in the fourth quarter of the AFC Championship game. This would tie the game. And ultimately, it didn't even matter thanks to John Elway in the drive. So where's Mark Mosley now? This is an awesome story. After retiring from the NFL, Mosley became an entrepreneur and invested in a number of different ventures. In 1998, he opened up a burger joint in Herndon, Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. He called it Mosley's Burgers, naturally. In 2001, a guy named Matt Morell came into Mosley's Burgers and struck up a conversation with the proprietor. Apparently, he, his brothers, and his dad owned their own small chain of five burger joints in the D.C. area, but they were looking to expand, and he thought Mosley should join them. That small chain was Five Guys. Matt's dad, Jerry Morell, eventually hired Mark Mosley to be their director of franchising, and the first Five Guys executive who wasn't a member of the family, the sixth guy, if you will. Mosley, now 70 years old, has been with Five Guys ever since, overseeing the company's expansion from five locations in 2001 to over 1,500 locations in over 13 different countries as of today. The only special teams player to ever win the NFL MVP award, a guy who is basically a living, breathing sports trivia question, is now a burger mogul traveling the globe, spreading the gospel of hand-formed burgers and fresh-cut fries to the masses. Most of us can only fantasize about being wildly successful in one of life's pursuits. Mark Mosley has actually achieved that kind of success in two different ventures. The guy needs to write a book. I'd read it. I'd definitely read it. I'd need it. Or... I could just go to Five Guys and get a burger.